Kenobi. Hey dude, we need to change our mom shit. Welcome to your MCM Sports Show. We are your hosts, Brian Rose. Trisha Callahan. Nabel Tobar. <laughs> uh, it is, what is it, the 7th, 17th? Wow, October 17th, hunt for October. I honestly didn't even know right now. Yeah. No yeah. clue. Time is going by fast. The sluttiest month of the year, baby. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite. Days April away, something like that. My favorite. We are brought to you by Escape from the Third Dimension and A Glimpse of Who We Are, Volume 1. Excellent books by Mr. Ipu Ben Ipu. Make sure you guys check out those books. Pretty awesome. So, let's get right into it. We're going to Fan get, debate. Yes, fan debate. Our cave dweller segment where we come up with stuff that's happened over the weekend and the week and battle it back and forth between these two. All right. This is a big one. Let's go. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Ravens linebacker Ray Lewis will miss the remainder of the season with an arm injury, an enormous blow to an already depleted defense that has uncharacteristically struggled this year. Lewis tore his right tricep during Sunday's 31-29 victory over Dallas. The 37-year-old Lewis led Baltimore in tackles and is the voice experience in the huddle. Baltimore also lost corner back Ladarius Webb for the year after he tore his ACL in his left knee Sunday. The injury occurred when Webb collided with Dallas's wide receiver Des Bryant. So let's talk about Ray Lewis first. Is is he done forever? Is this his well, last game in the NFL? No, I mean he had he had what the hell's wrong with him, buddy? He tore his right tricep. That's oh, the that's, my life would be crippled. Tommy John <laughs> surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, so, what were we talking about, Ray Lewis? Yeah. Ray Lewis, <laughs> torn so, tricep. Basically, um, you don't want to go out on that note. He has a historic career. Um, the guy basically gives a hundred percent. He gives, make sure his team gives a hundred percent. The type of guy that demands a hundred percent. I don't think he's gonna go out that way. I mean, I, I see him trying to. They put him on the IR with the hope to return back even this year. But I hope he does come back, and I think he will come back for at least a game. So a question, if he would have remained healthy this year, do you think he would have retired after this year? No, I still think he would have Just tried no, to play 39. Okay. Yeah, I think the opposite. I think he's going to come back, but I think if he didn't get hurt, he would retire next year. Yeah. Because he said that he wants to watch his uh, his son play. I think his son's playing at, at Miami. Oh, yeah. Miami. Where he's from, yeah. So he's going to be playing there. So I know he that's important to him, and, you know, Ray Lewis, how committed he is once he says something. But because of the injury, I think he'll be back next year just because he, that's not the way he would yeah, want to go. Yeah, you out. can't go out that way. Ray Lewis definitely can't go out that So way. with the depleted defense of the Baltimore Ravens, do you still think they're contenders, title contenders? No. They had trouble. You could tell we have – wait, you have three of the top, what, ten defenders of the, in the NFL on their team. You had Ray Lewis, Terrell Suds, Webb, maybe not the top ten, top 20 maybe. Um – you can't lose players of that type of caliber and expect to win, especially the Super Bowl. So Suggs is back um, at practice today. Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Light jogging. Light jogging. Oh, yeah. He's, he's back. Play they took him off. Well, it's good to see him jogging with an Achilles tendon and tear, rupture, whatever it was. It's That's good. amazing. Yeah. yeah, it is good to Do see him Do you think they're jogging. out for the title contender? Yeah, I think they're done. They've lost a key player in each part of their their defense. The, the line with Suggs. Linebackers Ray Lewis and Ladarius Webb. Even though he's not an Ed Reed or anything, he's probably the second best player in that secondary. And so they've lost three key players that you need to make plays. That I mean, they're even with Ray Lewis and Ladarius Webb, they were already suffering as it was. Yeah. They weren't the same defense. So you take those two out, and it's going to be a free for all for whoever plays them. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, Peyton Manning threw three touchdown passes in the second what half game. of the Monday Night Football game, and Tony Carter and Chris Harris scored off turnovers by Philip Rivers as the Denver Broncos. Overcame a 24 to 0 halftime deficit to stun the San Diego Chargers, uh, 35 to 24 on Monday night. Since the Super Bowl era began, a team has led 24 to 0 at half, 442 times. Just three of those teams have lost. So welcome San Diego to the lousy club. <laughs> Who is the most responsible for, for this huge comeback? Either Peyton, Denver's defense, or Philip Rivers with all the turnovers. Abel, I'm going with Peyton. I mean, even though he had help from the Chargers. It took a quarterback like Manning to capitalize on those. I mean, like on that one play where he was audibleing at the line yeah. and rushing and still had the presence to make that throw and squeeze it in over the shoulder yeah. to Decker. I'm sorry, only Peyton Manning can do that. I think it's a mixture of all, but you have to put Peyton at, at the top of the list. Um, 
he was jumping over defenders and then making a pass. I mean, I haven't seen Peyton Manning do that ever. Um, just the things that he's able to do when you, when you get down, you're never really out of the game. Uh, and it's nice to see his team match his intensity level. Even if it was only four and a half, it was still nice to see his team match his intensity. And it's weird saying that as a Raider fan that I was actually rooting for the Denver Broncos, but I'm a, I'm a Peyton Manning fan. So, but but Philip Rivers had a terrible game. Yeah. I mean, Where do you see the San Diego Chargers from here on out? I mean, three. I didn't expect them to be three and three even at this point, uh, but I definitely don't see them making the playoffs. And Nerf T- Turner. Uh, He's not an elite coach. He's not a. You think a, he's out after this year? He has to be out. He shouldn't have never been back this year. Yeah, well, you never know. I mean, he's gotten this many chances, and nobody thought he should have got that. Cha- he has a, a a losing. He's a losing record coach. Since he's no, been I'm not fight. arguing with that. He's a terrible coach, I believe. He's an awesome offensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah I hire is. him as that. But as far as coach, head coach, and main decision maker, he's terrible. I mean, you blow a 24-0 lead. I, I don't see how you do that. Passing the ball, you try to protect the lead. You're passing the ball in second and third down. I mean, you should be running the ball. Even yeah, exactly. Even if you ran the ball three and outs the second half, they could have wore down the clock. Exactly, exactly. Yep. All right. Well, Mike Holgram is out um, with the Browns. He was hired to turn around the Browns, but only the Panthers have a worst winning percentage since he arrived in Cleveland in 2010. Mm-hmm. His first full season with the club. New Cleveland Browns owner. Jimmy Haslam the third said to Tuesday that Holmgren was out as team president, although the Super Bowl winning coach will remain with the franchise to help in the transactions. Transitions. My bad. We got you. We got you. <laughs> Haslam was introduced as the Browns' new boss after the 32 NFL owners unanimously approved his $1 billion purchase of the team from Randy Leaner. Moments later, Haslam announced that former Eagles president Joe Banner would become chief executive officer. Wait, wait a minute. Didn't the Dodgers sell for $2 billion? We don't pay attention to the Dodgers that much. And then we you know have they an s- NFL team <laughs> selling for half But that. it's the Browns. It's the Browns. Yeah. It's but still, the uh, yeah. NFL doesn't make sense. That's a lot for money. the Browns. Yeah. But still, yeah. It's, it's the Browns. Okay. Okay, so does this mark a turnaround for the franchise? Um... Well, okay, here's the thing. Mike Holmgren, Super Bowl winning coach, he was said he's a great evaluator of talent, kind of how Trent Dilfer is a good evaluator of, uh, of talent. But this guy made too many mistakes. Um, for the Cleveland Browns to have that many first, second, third round drop picks and to not do anything for all these years, somebody has to take well, the blame and it has oh, to start up top. Dawn. Because oh. he's been there since what? What did we, say? What did we just say? 10, 2010. 10. Come on, yeah. it's been two years. Yeah. You can't just turn around a team in two drafts. Really. But you got to put some type of talent on the field. Well, you got Trent Richardson and uh, who's their quarterback now? Uh, the old guy's um, name? Whedon. Whedon. Brandon Whedon. Yeah. So, so you got Cole McCoy. He dropped, dropped it. It didn't turn out that well. Uh, quarterbacks are always hit and miss. And Cole McCoy, I mean, uh, you know, he seemed like he'd be a good choice, but yeah. apparently not. So is it, are they going to turn it around, though? No. Um I don't know if that franchise is cursed or what, but I think they have a good piece. Whedon is turning out to be okay. He's making great decisions. He's putting points on the board. Trenton Richardson is a beast, uh, so at least they got two pieces there. But defensively, they just have to start over. Where did Holmgren go wrong, from your view? Just drafts. Just drafts? His drafts. I think it's his draft. Well, look, when you, when you whiff on a quarterback in the NFL, it can set you back years. And he whiffed with Court McCoy and spent two years putting – you know, trading for, I right, forgot his name, he's not in the NFL anymore. They're trading for that guy who's not in the NFL anymore. He didn't do anything with the, with the Browns then. So um, he made some bad choices that probably cost him his job at the m- most important position in, in the NFL, which is the quarterback. Well, when he was with Green Bay, wasn't he also, I want to say GM or president, but he also had decision making. Yeah, he did. He, yeah, yeah. So I can't say that it's all on him. He I mean, he, they didn't have, when he came into them, they didn't have talent to begin with. So to build a team, I mean, honestly, he was starting from the ground up. Yeah. And in two years, he got them two very key pieces with Trent Richardson and Brandon Whedon. And they were starting to build on that. Now, they, they still need a lot of help at receiver, uh, both lines, I mean, everywhere across the board. But they at least they have the cornerstones to build around. So, I mean, he got them those. So he's just not getting the time that I think he needs. I think as a GM, you need three to five years to completely You want to give McKenzie three to five years on the Raiders? <laughs> it, it, well, I, honestly, it's not whether I give him tonight. He's going to need at least three to five years with the mess that he inherited. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get into that 
because I want to talk about McCain, McLean. Okay, we'll, we'll get into that. See, later. but at the same time, in three to five years, in three years, we'd have a good idea of what McKenzie's doing with that. If yeah. they're marginally better than they are now, or if they're still at the same level, then of course not. It's not going to go anywhere. You yeah. don't just make that skip, that jump all of a sudden. Yeah. Like the 49ers when they started after the bottom after 2002 season. They gradually were building up one, two players here, uh, a bunch of first round picks on the line. Stacked up, yeah, but yeah. they didn't do it all in one year. Yeah, they true. added true. a player here and there, Lyman, Joe Staley. They added player after player, draft after draft. It wasn't a quick process. Like people talk, like Harbaugh came in and all of a sudden, boom, yeah. he made everybody great. They were good players already to begin with. He had a lot of pieces that McKenzie doesn't have in Oakland. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, and not to be mean, the Raiders probably have the least talent out of anybody in. Uh, Jacksonville, Cleveland, Jacksonville with MJD, uh, I'll, and Gabbard. I mean, sorry, I'll, I don't think that, Gabbard, I don't though. think that's big. I don't think that's a big of a jump between Gabbard and Palmer. It's not that big of a. Difference. Oh boys. Well, I, well we, we can get into that when we get into the local section. But to be quite and honest, receivers in, in recent, he's. He's not, even if he, people say you can argue that point, he's not far off. <laughs> uh, Carson Palmer, he has a, he, two interceptions this year. I think only three or four touchdowns because they, they're not putting the ball in the end zone. You look at Wayne Gavard, Gav, Gav, I'm pretty sure it's close to those numbers. So he's not far off than what, what he's saying. But well, how about receivers? W- w- would you take uh, Denarius Moore over Blackman? No, I wouldn't because Denarius, well, both of them, they're injury prone. Uh, even though the last injury that he had wasn't his fault, he got hit in the head. Uh, but the seasons before that, uh, ankle, little nicks and nacks here and there, and more, uh, he can never get healthy. This is only his second year in the NFL, so I'm, eh, eh. They, they do have the time. They just got to stay. Healthy. I think the Jaguars right now have more of an upside than the Raiders do at this time because the Raiders, three to five years, Palmer's going to be out, so they're going to start again from the bottom. Yeah. So if they don't get somebody between now. They honestly, right now, they should focus on shoring up offensive weapons, lines, defense, everything else except the quarterback. Because when Palmer's out, at least they'll have all those pieces in yeah. place. If they try to replace him now, they're just wasting a pick. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. All right, let's talk some postseason MLB. Yeah. The Giants just fell to the Cardinals three to one in the delayed game number three. Uh, Cardinals lead that series now two to one. Game four is tomorrow. Let's talk a little gossip with this A Rod and Nick Swisher being benched and A Rod passing out his phone number uh, during a game and why they're benched. Why did everybody make a big deal about that? What's wrong with what A Rod did? No, probably nothing if he was producing and people didn't no. have something to fight. They're going to pick on him because he's not producing. But if he was hitting bombs. But he and wouldn't be doing that if he was producing. That's why I don't think everybody makes a big deal about it. He's on the bench. What else well, is that, oh, he was, <laughs> well, he he was, he was trying to produce in school. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? But not in hey, baseball. Well, good. Good. <laughs> well, he should be because, I mean, honestly, like I said, baseball he, baseball players don't even want to sit there and watch baseball games. Mm-hmm. They'd rather go to the clubhouse, drink, eat, yeah, play video games, sleep. or try to nail some. Do you think so. A-Rod will be with the Yankees next year? Oh, he has to. It's contract. He has to be. I mean, who's going to pay him? Or his 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 contract was front loaded, so he got thirty million this year. Next year, I think it goes down to like twenty six, then twenty four, then eventually twenty one. But um, who's going to pay a thirty six year old over over the hill uh, third baseman twenty million dollars plus? You know, to shore up their roster. No one. No one. Uh, no one but the Yankees. I mean, maybe the, the Dodgers can eat that, but they already have uh, Rick. You know, someone there that is, that's taking care of it. But no, if it was, it would have to be an American League team. It would have to be somebody that has a DH. Yeah, maybe he could DH for for some of that that's certain, But I'll, which is another thing about baseball, I don't care for <laughs> DH in one league, not in the other. It's stupid. You know, that's the Pick main it. gripe. That that's, Pick one. That's the main gripe when you look at okay. People who are MOB diehards are your traditionalists. Someone who's like 45 and over, 50 and over. Um, someone who, who doesn't too much like change. And you take a look at Bug Selig. One of the things he said uh, two days ago was, we got to take a look at how everybody's celebrating after a division win or after a playoff clinching. Like, really? You're going to talk about how people are popping champagne in, in the locker room versus your 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 uh, slow down in attendance or versus your instant replay. I mean, there was blown calls in a, in a Tiger game. I'm telling you. I mean, uh, running in that league into the ground. Yeah, I just, I just don't understand. I mean, it, uh, seriously, it, it's dumb. When they first implemented it, either make it across the board or don't do it at all. 
Don't put one league, American League, okay, they got DH, National League doesn't. So then when we get to the World Series, okay, if we're playing in the American League, you get a DH. Now, a team that hasn't had a DH all year has to pick somebody to go, okay, you're batting nine. Or have their whatever. pitcher, or have their pitcher, you know. Right, exactly, and then the vice versa. Someone yeah. that hasn't batted all year, now they got to step into a plate. Yeah. It just makes no sense. Yeah. All right, where do you guys see the ALCS going? Like, uh, the Tigers are leading that series three to nothing. Um, their I, game was postponed tonight, which yeah. the Tigers could have taken it. It'll air tomorrow. Where do you see that going? We'll give an extra uh, day's rest just in case game seven or even maybe game six Verlander is on the mound again. It's an extra day for him. But I, I think don't count the Yankees out yet. And I think Girardi for benching A-Rod that first game, he needed it. He needed to get benched. And A-Rod even spoke on it today. He said, hey, he reversed from what happened last time. He says, I'm a great player. Whenever I'm in the batter's box, I know I make that team better. No, no matter if it's the Yankees or no matter if it's an all-star team. So, hey, maybe that Kobe talk did help him out a little bit because yeah. he changed his tone. Because statistically, I, he doesn't make them a better, <laughs> better team. So. But I like the confidence. So with Jeter gone, Swisher bench, A-Rod bench, you believe that the Yankees can no, pull it out tomorrow? He needs to go out with how they got there. He made those changes yesterday, yeah, yesterday, and they didn't win. Nobody, no one produced. Put A Rod in. Go out the same way you got in. At least you can say, "Hey, I went out with my guns. I went out blazing." With versus. one of your best players, right? But he's yeah. originally supposed to be benched tonight. So he will was. he still be benched tomorrow? If if he wants to keep his job, I think his job will be in jeopardy. If they if they bench A Rod, a thirty million dollar piece. And keep in mind, if Steinbrenner didn't pass away, A Rod would still be playing. So, but that's on A-Rod to go campaign for that. He shouldn't expect Girardi to make this decision on his own. He should either not beg for it, but confront him. Yeah. And tell him, you know what, for the price I'm playing, you know, everything I have done for this team, put me in there. Yeah. Like, just don't quit on me now. Nick Swisher, he should leave on the bench. Yeah. Nick Swisher at one point was, what, like, one for 33 in the playoffs, so yeah, leave him. Well, Cano was the same way. He didn't, he got yeah. hit, well, yesterday right. against, you know, Verlander, but... You got to keep in mind that the, the Tigers have an excellent pitching staff, right? right. If, if not one of the best pitching staffs, it would have been the, the Giants, but the, with injuries and with Lincecum, basically Lincecum's not Lincecum, coming back though. Um, He's been great in the bullpen. In the bullpen, but as a star, baseball yeah, hater, exactly. as a star, whole game. And let's if he was great, then he would have started in the first let's first see. round. Yeah, I understand see. that, but he's not a lost one. Okay, <laughs> well, let's talk a little NLCS. Okay. That game was delayed today. They came back. The Giants fell to the Cardinals 3-1. to one. Scudero's back. Injury's not that bad. Beltron goes out. Mm-hmm. He's got a knee injury, but he should be back tomorrow, they say. Who do you think takes that series? I, the cards have... It's something about the cards. It's something about the Bush Stadium. It's some, it, They have, like, that magic. And, and the A's had that magic, but they didn't have the talent to back it. Cardinals have that magic with talent behind it. But now, keep in mind, the Giants, are they're a pesky team. They're always going to stay around. They're always going to give it their best. But I think it's probably going to go seven games in that, you know, one of that seven There's game. no chance the Cards will win seven, the seventh game in San you Francisco. Get, uh, at home, you, you ha- how many games have you won at home this playoffs? Not, not if, postseason last game, get out of here. If they do <laughs> get it back, I think if they get it back, well, what, what is it? It's 2-3-2, two, two, right? 2-3-2. Two, yes. two. So it's going back to San Francisco yeah. either way, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, no, not necessarily. No, not, not necessarily. necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah, they so if they can get it back to San Francisco, I like the Giants' tag- chances. If not, there's no way they're, they're winning in Taylor's. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about this more next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, we just, That's the only good I thing do about like baseball. the Giants. The, the thing is about the cards, like I said, is that magic factor plus talent to back it up. So it's hard. You have that pitching staff. It's, it's hard to overcome. And my, my uh, black horse here, Hunter Pence. Pence? Yeah. Watch, he's going to show up. Yeah. I like that. Because yeah. they're talking about dropping him in the rotation because know. he's I not producing. I don't that. I, 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 People will need something to complain about. You know what it is? In, in, in baseball, I think they tweak. I understand you got to tweak the lineup a little bit because... Uh, it's hard. It's rare you get people on base. When you get people on base, you have to produce. Like today, the Giants left like 13, 14 runners no, yeah. on base, and that's hard to watch. You know, and, and it's it's tough. But you can't tinker with your lineup that much. I think when you t- twink, tinker, twinker, tinker, wow, twinker, <laughs> thinking about Twinkies, been on a diet for too long. <laughs> he should have a Twinkie. Yeah, no, I should. Don't about our bet. But um, I think they need to stop tinkering with with the lineup a little bit. Um, 
and, and just go, like I said last, just go with what got you there. Well, and Bochi will. He stays really faithful yeah. to that lineup, so no. I think, yes, he does. Bochi switches it around. That's when, how they won in 2010. Well, if well, he, he needs to, but he's right not going to do it. Pinch, he made, like, pinch hitting Yeah, but uh, he's not going to go and switch it world. tomorrow because everybody's complaining that Pence isn't. No, he's not. Maybe game five. I don't put it, I don't put it past him. I would see him making a change because that, that's just his style. He goes with whatever he feels, whoever has the best chance, and he switches it up. We'll talk about this on Wednesday. Ah. <laughs> I'm rooting Keep for the Giants. Keep an eye on Facebook and our Twitters. We will definitely um, talk about it You know, on our Twitters. Tweet it. So I'm at your MCM Brian. Your MCM underscore Trisha. Your MCM underscore Abel. That's right. You can find us out. All right. We're going to hop back to the NFL, and I want you boys to give me, like, your top three NFL teams right now in rankings. Who's your... Top three. Now, here's the thing. Falcons are the only undefeated team now in the NFL. Do I place them number one? No, I do not. Uh, did that four-letter network place them number one? Yes, they did. Um, and Texans, I can't put them number one. It may sound weird. They I still spanked. have to put the New York Giants oh, God, in as number one. Only because I don't know what it is about this team. Um when they play on the road and it's a must win or any must win game, they will go out there and show you why they're the Super Bowl champions and why Eli Manning is an elite quarterback. He makes no name wide receivers into heroes. And there's only a couple of quarterbacks in the NFL that can do that today. You have Tom Brady, I hate that guy. You have <laughs> Eli Manning and Peyton Manning, or really, and, and Drew Brees are really the only guys you can make a no-name wide receiver into a hero. And it's something about that team. So I got them at number one. Uh, then I got, uh, I think the Texans got exposed. I got them at number three. Um, and then I have the Falcons. Uh, the Falcons at number two. Uh, two and three, Todd, I guess. I'm not quite sure. And San Francisco slid in there somewhere, four or five. Okay, let's see here. Who do you got as your number one, darling? My number one, I'd have to go with... Say it. No, I'm not saying it. Yeah. Okay, I'm you're number two. No. No, 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 no. I'll put them at number two. Okay. I'll put the Giants. And he's at talking number about two. the Giants. I'll put the Giants okay. at number two because they're lost. Because you can't say that someone got exposed. Like I don't agree how everybody like hell and earth is just falling on the 49ers' head because of how they played. No. Don't get me wrong. They got whooped. They got. I mean, it was embarrassing as a fan. I left yeah. at the end of the third quarter. It was just that bad. Yeah. But they had a bad game. They got, they got beat, but everybody acts like it's just completely over. The same thing happened to them last year. They got whooped, and they came back, and they responded. Harbaugh, after the four losses that they've had with Harbaugh, they're 17-5 and, f- and five with Harbaugh. But after the four losses previous to this one, the next game, the teams have combined, they've scored a total of 11 points. That's it. Four games. They had two shutouts, the Jets, the Rams, and then they had eight points against the Bengals. And three against. Well, see the thing. Say Tampa. Power rankings day on ESPN.com. Oh, you know what but that see the means. thing is that. Um, well, who you guys are, first of all, who you guys are number one? Then if you don't have the Giants, is number one. Well, that's what I'm looking for. Hold on, let me see here. Let's see. So Anybody go, but the Giants. I'll still go with. Well, I have to go number one Falcons just record wise. They're six and up. Don't get me wrong. I don't think they're a real number one. It's just I have to give them that credit because they are six and up. Okay. They should have lost against Carolina and they should have lost against the Raiders. Yeah. But you know. Both of those teams blew it, so yeah. <laughs> you don't pin somebody. And it was the same exact formula. They were pinned down at the end of the game with a minute left, and they still got into field goal range. Yeah. So they deserve that. I mean, bad teams don't make those kind of clutch plays. Matt Ryan makes those throws, makes those plays. So I can't say that they're not that they're a bad team. I don't believe they're a true number one because they get spanked whenever they get to the playoff. Yeah. But record wise, I have to give them number one. So I would go two Giants. And as far as number three. Texans, don't forget the Bears, man. The Bears are still. No, no, no. The Bears still got Jay Cutler as quarterback. They, they still got. Him. <laughs> he's still up and down. When he's playing good, yeah, they're up there. I'll put them at number one. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't know when you're going to get. It. And it doesn't matter if if he's getting pressure or not. Sometimes he just comes out and has bad games on his own for no apparent reason. So. Because um, he looks funny. My number three, I would go. See, with Ravens getting hurt, I can't put them there. I would still go with the Texans. Texans. Yeah. You still have to put him up there. I mean, and Niners number four. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're about the. I'm, yeah, we're about the same. The only thing that's with the Texans, like you say, you really can't say a team got exposed. But I think if if there is a such thing as being exposed, 
the Texans got exposed as far as scoring wise. They can't put as many points on the board when, when it's needed. When Aaron Rodgers is on, he shows he is on. That's another quarterback I miss that could turn a no name into something. But or, yeah, uh, he can win a game. For it. Yeah, definitely, he can put points on the board and in a hurry as he proved six touchdowns. Six touchdowns. Just keep saying that. That's amazing for one game. Oh yeah, he's amazing. And well, that's, but honestly, you're gonna see that a lot from them because they have no running game, none. Yeah, but six touchdowns even for a team, even if it's three rushing, three running, that's still a lot of scoring. Right, but if you're throwing and only throwing, then it's not that hard because it's not like he doesn't have weapons. He has weapons at every yeah, position. He does. He does. So I mean, honestly, three to four touchdowns a game isn't unrealistic for their game, for them because he's just he's that good. And they have no running game whatsoever. Well, see, that's the thing. We think if they if they were to play again, you think the Texans could put up the same amount of points, thirty plus points, to even make it competitive again? That's yeah, I don't think they could beat the Texans twice like that. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Hmm. Okay. Right. The Texans, I, I, they they have a lot of talent on defense as well. So I don't think no, I don't think that that Green Bay would get off on that for two games. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna go to a commercial. All right. I believe, and when we come back, we're going to have our new segment, Who Are You, Bro? And Who are you, bro? And we get in a little more of your top NFL plays. <coughs> we'll oh, see you when we come back. <laughs> Don't listen to Abel. Well, that's not very nice. <laughs> you just like condemn A few years ago, I woke up spiritually and became aware of who I am and who we all are beyond science, religion, and culture. I understood that a million Superman put together has absolutely nothing on one human being. Superman's superhuman powers are extremely primitive compared to the literal weapons inside each individual soul. Thus, I put pen to paper to write my autobiographies. The first is called a glimpse of who we are and the second is called escape from the third dimension you can find them on amazon and barnes and noble as well as my website at www.agbeepou.com Boston College! I don't believe it! It's a touchdown! You know you're good at football, but you also know that that's not enough to pay for college. You need someone on your side, and 5starjock.com will give you everything you need to get athletic scholarships. We're offering you ebooks, audio, and DVDs, all designed by those who have gotten dozens of scholarships. You can also talk on forums with people who have received scholarships so that you'll be able to do what it takes to get yours. 5 Star Jock will teach you all the secrets so that colleges have to sit up and take notice of you and grant you the athletic scholarship scholarships you need to live your dreams because we have all the secrets the five star jocks ebooks audio and dvds that you get on our website are a really small price to pay for the hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships you can receive there's nothing out there like five star jock.com visit five star jock.com and start the path to success take control of your future grab the best chance you have to get that athletic scholarship go to five star jock.com now that's the number five star jock.com Do you play video games but don't have the money to keep up with all the latest titles? We have a solution. Gamefly. Choose from over 7,000 exciting titles, no late fees. Enjoy the games as long as you want with free shipping to and from your door. And thanks to Man Cave Media, you can try it before you buy it. As a Gamefly member, you can rent as many games as you want and play them as long as you want for one low monthly fee. Manage your own personal wish list of games with what they call My Game Q. Check out one or two games at a time. When you're done, send the game back to them, and the next pick in your game queue will automatically be sent to you. There are never any due dates or late fees for members. Plus, members get unlimited PC play for free. That's right, unlimited PC play for free. To start your free trial, here's what you have to do. Visit www.themancavemag.com slash offers and click on the Gamefly icon. That's www.themancavemag.com slash offers. Get off your high horse. 
No, I want one too. Welcome back to your MCM Sports Show. We are your hostesses with the most. Mostesses. <laughs> oh, I didn't know we were syncing up. Sorry. I didn't know we were Wait, um, it's just natural take over two, here. Take two. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm your, one of your hosts, Brian Rose. I'm Trisha Callahan. And I'm Abel Tobar. All right, we are brought to you by Escape from the Third Dimension, A Glimpse of Who We Are, Volume 1. Books by Mr. Ipu Ben Ipu, who grew up, I think, in South Africa, who had like an epiphany and wrote these books. Pretty cool. So, let's get into what everyone's talking about. Top Performer of the Week. Yeah, Top Performers of the Week. All right. Let's talk a little offense. I know, I'm pretty sure everybody has the same guy. Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> six touchdowns. Nope. No. Oh, no. of course Abel doesn't. I got Peyton Manning. I, I Aaron Rodgers up there too, but Peyton Manning, I had to throw him in there. Even though the defense did score a couple of those touchdowns in the comeback, but the way that he just performed and he went Leaping his, over people leaping, and passing? Yeah, leaping over people and then throwing the ball, 36 years old. Got to give it to Peyton Manning. Tell me, tell me. I'm going to go with a subtle one. Oh. To Ahmad Bradshaw of the New York Giants, who racked up 116 rushing yards on the Niners, the long, and a rushing touchdown, the most since yeah, but he was like the one. Like people count those like they matter. Let him you run, guys let him try to run out. Let him try to run out from 10 yards and see yeah, where he yeah, ends up. Yeah. But he still, uh, and not giving it because like he earned him. He just took. He did what most players should do, and he took advantage of a tired defense and racked up most of those yards after the second, you know, fourth quarter, pretty much is where he got. I mean, after the first half, he only had 21 yards like on 11 or 12 carries so it's not like he was doing anything before but yeah you just got to do that those those one or two yard gains in the first half and three or four yard gains in the second half you gotta take advantage. they broke the Niners well that game yeah Sad. I think they, they got their number well we'll get into that a little bit yeah we'll get, we'll get into that a little bit there's a lot of stuff to talk about later yeah, defense is. defense I I once again I just came up with the Denver Broncos defensive team as a unit you haven't seen them play this well since I, Tim Tebow was the quarterback, <laughs> um, but and it's I'm I'm ha- and once again as a Ra- I am still a Raider fan. I love the Raiders to death, but because he has to, to tell see- you about it. Yeah, He's a liar. <laughs> He's such a liar. <laughs> I do love the Raiders. I'm a Bay fan. Let's just say that. Oh, I'm not I'm a Bay, Bay fan. fan. I tried to root for the Niners. I, I, actually, it didn't work out, did it? Cursed. Just yeah, the fact see? that you admit on national or the internet I tried whatever. to root for the Niners. It didn't work out. Then you're not a true Raiders fan. It didn't work out. Because you would never see a diehard Niners fan go, oh, I tried I to root for the Raiders. I would never say go Raiders. And that was pasted on my post. I would say, damn, the stadium didn't blow up this week again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next week. <laughs> see, <laughs> who do you got as your top defensive player? I got O.C. Umanyora, mm. who was disappeared for most of the year and then ends up All of the year. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. just happens to show up at this game. Him and the rest of the team. Him and Roll. They were fired up. Asante. Perfect time. Yeah. Pierre didn't. I don't think Pierre got back. And right. Antoine Roll, you could throw in there. Yeah. He took advantage of some of the stupidest mistakes I've ever seen Alex Smith make. Yeah. Throwing into triple so coverage exactly. twice. Exactly. And not only that, the, the worst one was where he overthrew the slant route. If you look at it from Alex Smith's point of view, uh-huh. I mean, that pass, even if he was open, it was a good five yards above the receiver's head. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the hell he was throwing at, but... Antoine Roll was there to one handed. He was take trying advantage. to get rid of it too quick. It's too much pressure in his face already. No man. cheese. Well, yeah. I'm going to just agree with you both. Okay. All right. All it's right. very, uh, it's very PC modest. Of you. Yeah. Keep politically correct. It's all right. Bro, yeah. We're going to get into our Your MCM Who Are You Bro? Who Player are you of bro? the Blade. Come on. What's that? Is that still playing? Turn around. Let me see him, man. Turn around. Let me see him, man. Turn around. I don't know you, bro. <laughs> Who are you, bro? Sean Green. Rex Ryan's ground and pound offense turn, returned in a big way Sunday as Sean Green ran for a career high 161 yards, three touchdowns on 32 carries to power the Jets to a 35-9 route on the Indianapolis Colts on Sunday. Looks like Sean Green will carry a heavier workload moving forward since Powell might have suffered a dislocated shoulder, according to the NFL Network Kim Jones. And fellow backup running back Joe McKnight is expected to have the MRI on his ankle, and he is going to miss some games. But it's nice to see them actually go out there and do what they're supposed to do. Let me see Mac. Turn around. Russell Wilson. The Matt Flynn talk is going to die down for a while. Everyone's favorite big talking cornerback, Richard Sherman, says the coaching staff made the right decision in choosing Wilson over Flynn. Wow, that's going to hurt. The rookie quarterback from Wisconsin threw for 293 yards and three touchdowns on only 16 completions, which in an average of over 10 yards per catch. 
Russell Wilson also threw a legit winning touchdown <laughs> pass to upset Tom Brady and his Patriots. This is a big game for them. And I think Seattle is, is a tough team to beat in that state. Yeah, but I feel sorry for him tomorrow because he's going to get smashed on by a pissed off Niners team. Uh, that we'll poor see, little. That's the best pass defense. Actually, it's the best defense in the NFL. So that's going to be a good game to check out. I don't think Russell Wilson is going to do too hot up against the no. Niners. The Niners, honestly, they have, what, a second or third pass? pass. Let me see that, man. Let me see that, man. Yeah, and it's Alfred Morris. I don't know you, bro. It's, it's Alfred Morris. It's Josh Freeman. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Josh Freeman threw for 328 <laughs> yards and three touchdowns. Rondé Barber scored on a 78-yard interception return to help the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the struggling Kansas City Chiefs 38-10 on Sunday. Freeman has shown flashes of greatness at times. Unfortunately, these flashes are against lesser talented defenses. Uh, yeah, I kind of second that. Uh, Freeman is a good quarterback. He's just not very consistent. He has all the makings to be a good quarterback, the arm, the, the size, the mobility, but he just doesn't put it together on a consistent enough basis. Now, you think it's the coach, coaching staff yeah. not taking advantage of He's it had properly? two coaches already. That's on him. Yeah. He's had chances to play. and A couple years back, he did a lot better, but this year he falls off. Yeah, yeah. All that right. Was that. So that's who are you, bro? bro? Okay, so our week six predictions. Brian happened to lose this week. Um, no, I didn't. Yes, I you won. did. I won. Abel lost. I came dead last. Brian lost. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, well, awesome. anyways, we're not going to run you through the whole schedule this week, but we are going to go, um, go over like a couple key games to see where these boys are going to sit. How do you guys feel about the New York Giants um, hosting the Washington Redskins? How do you think uh, RG3 is going to fare, too? Well, on, on these games like this, it's hard to say because you know that these teams pretty much see each other almost every year. They don't really like each other. Um, I still going to have to go with the Giants. But the thing is, when Suji put faith in the Giants, they lose a game they're not supposed to lose. Um, so if this is a bet... Exactly. At the, I got to go Giants. It's in New York. They're not going to lose. Six and a half points. Rip him up, RG3. I think he's going to go off. He's been going off all season. Huh? He's been going off <laughs> exactly, all season. Exactly, so I don't expect it to change this time. Yeah. All right, how about the Ravens at Texas? Texans. Houston Texans. I got Defense beat up. I got to take the Texans. Yeah, we're going to see how bad that defense is this week. Yeah, I got to take the I don't think I don't think the Ravens are going to line them up like, like, like the... Uh, like they got lit up last week, so. Well, you know what? Let me backtrack. I actually think that this is going to be a highly emotional game for Baltimore. That Ray Lewis is going to be in the locker room, talking them up and getting one good game out of them, because he's going to be letting them know that nobody expects anything from them, expects yeah. the worst, and they're going to come out fired up and actually ex- uh, upset the Texans. But mm. that's going to fade after. Mm. That can only work. Bold predictions here on your MCM Sports Show. <laughs> Bold predictions. Um, our Monday night game, the Bears are hosting the Detroit Lions. I think Chicago is going to rip the new into Detroit. Yeah. They always win at the last possible moment. <laughs> They're the most dysfunctional team I've ever seen. They win in the most unconventional ways I've ever seen. They look hopeless first three and a half quarters, and then with five minutes left in the game, they do something ridiculous to win the game. Yeah, I'm going with that. Now, what about tomorrow's game? Niners oh, versus yeah. Seattle. That's Thursday night. Special. Wait, what's the what's the point? Seven points, San Francisco. I'm going to go Seattle only because of the points. Seven points? Only because of the points. I'm going San Francisco all the way. A million points. I don't care. They're going to be blowout. They're going to be know. pissed. They're going to be pissed, and not only that, they're going to go back to running the ball 25 times with Gore and another 10 or 15 with Hunter. They're going to take the ball out of Alex's hands after the last game. Yeah. How do you think uh, Marshawn Lynch will? I think he's going to get stuffed because Perfect. they're going to make Russell Wilson Just throw the ball. Just what I like ball. to hear. Yeah, yeah. Gonna and it's going to be an offensive struggle, I, I think. Well, if the San Francisco can run the ball, it won't be too much of an offensive struggle for San Francisco. But like I said, Seattle has the best pass defense, and they played some. Of, they played the best passers in the game. They played Aaron Rodgers. They played Tom Brady. Well, so those numbers aren't skewed. No, they have a great defense all yeah. around, front seven and the secondary. But I think that the 49ers line – they're so good at run blocking that they're going to nullify the front seven of the Seattle Seahawks. So that's 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 just, if, if Gore has a good game, then you know that that the San Francisco. If good. the game plan's the same like it was against the Giants, where they come out throwing oh, and you only and only run Gore game. twelve times, they're going to get blown yeah. out of the water. Yeah, yeah, I agree, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. All right, we'll get a little more into the Niners when we get into our local section. <laughs> right now, we have a commercial. Are you thinking about going to Tahiti? Because 
since we are. Yeah. <laughs> are you getting tired of the daily grind and just need to get away? Just visit Chubbit Travel and book your next vacation getaway. Chubbit real big. Chubbit. You can visit Chubble Travel on the web at www.chubbit.com. Chubbit Travels <laughs> offers... <laughs> Hotel <laughs> <laughs> Hotels, airfare, vacation packages, and car rentals that can fit any budget and any preference. You may also follow it Chubbit Travel on Twitter at Chubbit Travel or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Chubbit Travel. Don't let the daily grind get to you. Book your next vacation getaway with Chubbit Travel. Actually, we were reviewing this site, and it's actually pretty sweet. We are going to Tahiti. Yeah, you guys yeah. will check it out. Who's mm-hmm. airfare, who's your room stay. Basically, all you have to do is buy your... your Give them your credit card, pay the money, and everything else is taken care of for you. So check yeah, out. It's like your own personal travel agent. Yep, just enter where you're going, where you're coming from. Uh, I like that. Yep. All right, so coming up next, we got to get into Juan Castillo and the Eagles. Is Mike Vick safe? We're going to get into all that coming up next on your Instant Sports Show. Where's my phone? Talking to my baby. Talking to Baseball season is in full swing, and the experts at iCWinners.com are providing their clients with another home run this year. iCWinners.com is a sports handicapping firm with over 100 years of combined experience predicting sporting event winners. They were ranked as the number one handicapper in the world for 2011's Major League Baseball season, and they're off to another strong campaign in 2012, boasting winning percentages of over 64%. Don't miss your chance of playing some easy winners at the books this Major League Baseball season. Go to iCWinners.com and sign up for their free sports predictions today. That's icwinners.com. Hey, listen up. Are you a fan of the Lingerie Football League? The fastest growing professional sport in the nation? Then we have an app for you. Ultimate LFL. With Ultimate LFL, get the latest news, videos, and Twitter alerts on the Lingerie Football League. Always stay up to date and in the loop. Ultimate LFL. Only available in the Google App Store. Download it now. Ultimate LFL. doing anything appropriate. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I candy on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I candy. I like that page. It's not a bad one. They throw up good pictures every now and then. High heels and weightlifting. Yeah. yeah. I'm just being and introduced. I have no idea who Coco is. We are you girls. liars. I see the girl. I'm Trisha Callahan. Mabel Tobar. And I'm distracted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Eagles fire Juan Castilla. Castillo. Castillo. Tell me. It's O at the end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just getting back from eye candy. All right. See? She likes it. <laughs> Go like it, everybody on Facebook. <laughs> All right. Tell us about it. Good for you, by the way. Um, Thank you. I think the firing of Juan Casillo, it was needed. The move should never been done. In but, yeah, place. how do you move somebody from offense to defense and then go, you're fired because it doesn't make sense. we totally screwed you up and you sucked at it? It doesn't make sense. The only thing I think of, look, Juan Castillo has been around the Eagles for 14 years. Juan and they did that to him? Yeah, and, and but the thing is, yeah, I think yeah. that they were looking for a, a way, somewhere to, to place him, giving him, okay, look, we already have a good offensive coordinator, which is me, and Reed. Oh, right? Lord. So we, we know that you want to move up in the ranks. Try the defensive coordinator. I have the offense so tied down. We're going to score so many points. Fumble, the most fumble. turnovers yeah. in the league. <laughs> just get a couple okay. of free and outs per game, and, and I'll handle the rest. But it turned out Andy Reid can't get the offense rolling as much as he liked. So Juan Castillo was asked to do way too much in his first couple of years as a defensive coordinator. It backfired, and they had to fire a, a long-tenured Eagles guy. And it's Andy Reid, one of Andy Reid's closest friends. I think it's, 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 it's not in a bad situation. Yeah, but like any situation, I mean, he's going to go, hey, it's either my job or yours. And sorry, buddy, you got to go. Yeah, yeah. And he is classy about it. it it's an act of desperation, classy. though. 
I mean, he's just, it's almost to send a signal to the players like, hey, we're about to have a fire sale if you guys don't get it together. I mean, and whoever they bring in, they can't be worse than one. Yeah, have they announced a replacement or? Uh, Yeah, it's the um, the guy who should have been offensive coordinator. I forget his name, our defensive coordinator. But he's actually pretty good. He's not bad. Um, But he needs, it's not too much to defend. Look at the last week's game. It was how they lost. Well, they did. They they gave up 10 points in the fourth quarter. They need to bench Vic. That's who's got to go next, and then uh, finally Andy Reid. I think Andy Reid is. I don't know if he's not trusting Vic. I wouldn't say that, but I think that he's not putting Vic in the best situation. He's do. He trusts him too much. Do you think Vic's with the Eagles next year? I think it's either Andy Reid or Michael Vick. It's up to the organization. They yeah. already said if 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 the team is is mediocre, then we're, we're getting rid. We're going to get rid of Andy Reid. So we're going to see. If, if they get rid of Andy Reid, I think Vic is there to stay. Because to rebuild with another quarterback, right. they're going to have too many seasons where they're rebuilding. I don't they think got, they want that. they got too much money invested in him anyway. So yeah. Just kind of, yeah. I, I think I think it's going to be Reid and, and Vic's going to stay. But that's why I think Reid should bench him. Because if he benches him and the season gets better, then he, he can, proves it that yeah. it's Vic that's where the reason rookie, we're losing. You got a rookie now. It doesn't matter how much worse can he play. RG three is a rookie, Vic. right? I mean, I mean, and their rookie actually the looks black good. Jesus. He looked good in <laughs> 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 their rookie looked good actually in the preseason. He, he doesn't, and and Andy Reid has been good at developing backup quarterbacks. Yeah. So I mean, like I said, he can't he can't play much worse than than Vic. All he has to do is come in and manage the game. Don't turn the ball over. I'll put the plays and then just dump the ball to LaShawn McCoy and just have heavy running game, and he'll save the season and prove that it's Vic's fault that they ever playing back. Because, I mean, honestly, how many times has Vic fumbled the ball within the five-yard line? His hands are small. His hands are small, and, and he doesn't protect it. And he, it's been like that since his whole career. college days. His whole yeah. career. So, I mean, that's not going to change. So And to put your hopes in him? Come on. I, I, to somebody that admits a year ago that they just started looking at video, and yeah. to me, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how talented you are, He's not doing anything. I think it all, just to get off track here, well, not not too much, just, just to expand on it a little bit, I should say. Uh, the coach that Michael Vick had in Atlanta that first year, they worked for the NFL Network, and then they fired him because he was terrible there, too. Can't think of his name. <laughs> Jerry Glanville? No. Uh, can't think of his name for some reason. But I, it's all him. It was his job to develop Michael Vick as a quarterback. Just, just you like, can't make a quarterback want to watch video. You, you have to develop him some type of way. That's it. Whether him. he becomes in the league as a prima donna, I know back then you come into the league, you're guaranteed fifty, forty, you know, million dollars. But it's still up to him to develop that, you know, the quarterback. And I don't think he did a good enough job. But it's Vic, Man, like Genie. Look at, I mean, look Is at Vic's him? decisions. Eric no, no, not Man Genie. Look, look at Vic's decisions. I mean, with the whole dog thing, he's not known to make the best decisions. <laughs> so you can't make him. Yeah. Watch video, especially. I mean, honestly, if they drug him in there and said, "Hey, you have to sit here and watch it," he'd probably fall asleep. Yeah. I mean, he just wasn't interested in doing it till last year, what till his ninth, tenth year. Yeah. I mean, come on, it's just he doesn't have the will to become better, or he thinks that he's so naturally gifted that he can just do it on tan- talent alone. Yeah. And he's taking too many shots in the head that they're actually starting to show. What about him taking shots in the ribs and then holding his head? What's that about? Hey, he's, he's, he's all turning around. Yeah, yeah, the last thing you want to do is like, stretch your arms out and take a shot at Yeah, it's thick. I don't, I don't know. I can't understand yeah. him. All right. <laughs> N- uh, Nike comes out and drops Lance Armstrong this morning. Uh, he steps down as the Livestrong chairman. Another helmet company he was working with, I think it's Gyro, drops him. How are you feeling about this? A guy that raises a half a billion dollars for cancer, wins all these tis- titles, supposedly, while doping. Well, is this guy like I feel? I almost feel. I almost want to give him a hug. Like well, I feel bad for him because he's. Well, here's but, the thing. Well, you, you do feel bad, and that's a lot of people's sentiment right now. As it's yeah. Happening, but his things, teammates are coming out and saying, you know, he was doping, and then they're saying, if you read the report, there's no doubt he, he was, was doping. doping. Well, here's the thing. They said they're going to take or thinking about taking the wins from him, right? The the sport of cycling was so dirty. The next 10 people in line in all those races, right. guess what? They're busted for doping, right? They still do. So it, 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 for them to come out and say this, 
there's only a small fraction of people who watch cycling. I can't even find it on television. Anymore. I don't know another cycler. <laughs> you know, I, I, I the only know. reason why I know because mm -hmm. my wife's friend cycles, and and when we went to his house one day, it was like, what network or channel is this? Oh, this is a cycling network. Really? ESPN, <laughs> ESPN the Ocho. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I watched it there because it was on the TV, and I was at the house. So I'm going to do say, hey, dude, change your channel. Like, yeah, no. no cycling. Yeah. I want to see some violent football. <laughs> so, and, and, and keep in mind, that's when it was popular. It was the thing to watch. You had... Armstrong's team in, in those races and now you know all these guys are busted who's going to watch now who's going to want to go out and buy a bike Look, all, think about all the bikes he sold all the all the, the biking is probably the most expensive sport oh out there. it's yeah. I mean you go to Mike's Bikes anywhere around here and it's like I want to get a bike yeah. okay you got five grand you yeah. know yeah. you're like yeah. I, mean, I got a mountain bike and I what? can spend five hundred Right. On a mountain bike. Oh and yeah, that's the I mean, entry. You got, got how a, many wheels on it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's insane. Like I have a friend that spent seven thousand dollars on a bike, and I'm See? all, what? You can buy like a, a car. Yeah. You can buy a vacation to Tahiti, Tahiti and have some cash on Chubb It. Oh, I'm just saying. There you saying. go. There I'm you just go. saying. Nice. But but I I feel bad for the guy. Um, the the place that if if it's an even playing field, then why bust the guy? Why bust anyone? Punish right. everybody. Start well, over. Well, well okay, what but are we talking it? about? Are we talking about the wins? Or are we talking about Nike dropping him? I think we're getting a little off topic. True, true that. I was talking about Nike the wins. Drop. I was okay, talking about so the wins. Nike dropping him. Do you agree or disagree with that? I disagree. Okay. Nike, no. Nike, do, they do their due diligence. Keep in mind, Nike. This is only the second person Nike has dropped. The once before mentioned that we're talking about Michael Vick with the dog incident and Lance Armstrong. They know. They do their homework. They know everybody was dope. They knew what they were getting into. They, but they had to know if something hits the fan that what are we going to do? We probably had some type of contingency plan or something like that. But if it's an even playing field, they should have thought about that before they took the deal. I think they should have stuck by him. They stuck by Kobe Bryant when he went through his pre -mortal. They stuck by Tiger Woods. But he was Woods. innocent. They stuck by Tiger Woods. That's... that's Okay, here's... Because here's that's a whole lot of money. <laughs> well, okay, so, so like... I heard an interesting take from a, a, a radio host in the Bay Area from 95.7, John Lund. The yes. game, awesome, awesome radio show for you guys in the Bay Area. Right. When we're not on, listen to them. Exactly. So he had an interesting, interesting take on it where he said, take Barry Bonds, for instance. Mm -hmm. Barry Bonds here in the Bay Area, especially San Francisco Giants fans, we don't care that he doped. doesn't yeah. matter. He's yeah. safe. We're, our, we're his safe haven. It yeah. doesn't matter what the world thinks of him. We, we love him regardless. Yeah. He said that the United States should look at Lance Armstrong the same way, that Nike should look at him the same way, that he, yeah, he doped, but he's our doper. He's our racer, yeah. so we protect him. He won those races for us, doping or not, we should protect him. So I thought that was an interesting take, and I agreed with it for a moment, mm. but then I really thought about it, and the reason that I understand Nike dropping him is because they're international. This is a, f a French sport. This is, you know, this, so Nike doesn't care what just the United States thinks because they sell their product all over the world. France is probably a big buyer of their products. So if they were to keep supporting Lance Armstrong, they're pissing off France. Yeah. People in the United States are still going to buy Nike because they're also kind of pissed off at Lance Armstrong. They understand it. Yeah. So money-wise, I understand the decision on why they dropped him because it's it's bottom line. Good Saves point, money. Abel. Good point. Good point, Abel. Damn, dude, look at you making sense. What's going on? What else is new, people? <laughs> All right, I got to let my boys get in a little bit of their NBA. So what's going on with these pregame routines? Now, cut them out. Stern said that he's going to uh, actually try to cut out, like, the LeBron James powder, uh, the Dwayne Wade pull-ups in the net, um, you know, all that little stupid handshakes and picture stuff. Good. Now, do I see? Do I find that as a problem? No, because so is LeBron the only one that does that whole powder thing? Kobe does something similar. Garnett does it. Garnett Garnett blows it, but it was made into a whole campaign, and he made money off yeah, of it. So did Nike. Does. Nike made made money off of it. Whatever. Now here's the thing. <clears throat> the reason why I, I'm kind of upset about it because. That's what makes the NBA different from, let's say, baseball. The NBA, they do stuff all kids gravitate towards, what, new-looking jerseys that look cool and stupid antics outside the game. Kids that's are drawn terrible. to that's terrible. That's what kids, ruins basketball. It, it might, but like you said, sometimes it comes down to the bottom line and who's going to watch these games. They're looking for kids growing uh, up to watch the game so that way when they go there, 
they have kids, and then boom, you know, it's a, it's a whole little line there. And I don't. You said it yourself. You're about to coach. You want your kids doing this crap before the games? If we're winning, I don't mind. <laughs> if we're losing, do that. If, if, exactly. You can't do that. It's one or the other. No. Nah, it, it depends. Okay, look. If I have a good player like LeBron, Dwayne Wade, who does all these antics and stuff like that, then I don't mind it. But if uh, I have a guy the caliber of Smush Parker I hope taking the parents fake are watching. pictures. I wouldn't let you coach my team. <laughs> Hell no. The reason I can't coach kids, I tried. I don't have the patience for this stuff. I hate – to me, I've never been that type of person where, like, if, if I was to play football and I scored a touchdown, I wouldn't celebrate. If I play basketball or do something, well, you just don't celebrate. You let yeah. the game speak for itself. And when you start doing that stuff before the game even started, it takes focus off what's important, the game. Actually, I did play with you competitively in basketball. I don't remember you celebrating. Right. Yeah, that's true. I was always ready for the next play. Yeah. It's just yeah. – it, it doesn't matter. It, it, when, but we but we played against in that league. We played against other people that would celebrate. Yeah, and, yeah. And it – it works against them because I know when they played against me and they did it, it pisses me off. Yeah. So it made me focus even more on the game. Yeah. And that's what I feel like when LeBron does all this stuff, they're already got a bullseye on their back, yeah. being you know the super team that they think they are. So they don't need to add more fuel to the fire. Well, that's the thing. It's it. Does it hurt the NBA though? I don't think it hurts. Them. If anything, they sold more witness shirts at that time in Cleveland because yeah. of it. Ugh. So I mean, it doesn't hurt the NBA. It, it just it hurts the. The, some people's view of that person who is doing it. But that person's still going to watch the game. That person's still going to buy their favorite team's jersey. To me, I just don't want kids to see it. I, I don't want them to think that that kind of stuff is okay. Because, like, I went to a, a kid's game uh, last year at uh, my old school, uh, St. Beats uh-huh. Elementary School. I saw kids just juking and jiving, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm talking like sixth, seventh graders, eighth graders. Just they were. It was one on one game. Yeah. I was just watching a bunch of one on one basketball, and it pissed basketball. me off watching yeah. it because exactly it was like watching and one. Yeah. And to me, it's like playing basketball all my life. It pisses me off watching basketball like that. Yeah. I, I don't care for it. It takes away from the game. Yeah. And I, but I see why they play like that. I can't tell them that it's wrong because they look at they look That's at the LeBron zoo. You don't yeah. see Kobe doing it. Yeah. If so, if I when I talk to these kids, I tell them you know focus on someone like Kobe. Yeah. I hate your opponent. I, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Because. That'll help you focus on the game. Yeah. But don't go out and try to showboat when you haven't even done anything. The game hasn't even started. Yeah. And that's why I don't care for... I mean, they even put out a comic book. Have you seen it? No. Marvel put out a comic book with LeBron called uh, The King of the Rings. Rings, plural. Wow. He's only got one. <laughs> and it's talking about the promise of getting the five, six, and the seven. And he's only got one. You got to yeah. be kidding me when stuff like that's out. And kids are seeing this junk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. come on, man. It's, you it's killing like sport. When, like, uh, somebody scores a touchdown and they sell I hate it. Okay. I honestly, when did you see Jerry Rice ever do anything like that? Never. He never. Never. You know, greatest of the, the game. Also never did it. Uh, Ladamian Thompson just never the ball right to the ref. There you He's go. Like, I, I expect if anything, to be in he there, I drop. To be in if anything, time. he does a drop. Here's the ball. Yeah. Here's, yeah that's it. Yeah. But that's it. I mean, honestly, like the, the icky shuffle, the the Randy. I gotta bosses. admit though, when Come Dion on. scored a touchdown, it was it was beautiful. Okay, Dion was entertaining. Yeah. But then you got now because of Dion. You got everybody doing. You got a receiver with now, the seventy yard. He's done. To, he's high stepping yeah. before he. How many times have you seen someone high stepping before they get in the end zone and the ball gets knocked loose uh, and boom? Jackson. Okay. On, on, on the Eagles. Deshaun, exactly. Deshaun, you've seen it happen because they think like At that. The and one they go, yard line. They're already. But that's my problem. Is they're already <laughs> focusing on the celebration <laughs> rather than the game. Yeah. And that's how. Like you got. I mean, look at LeBron's. Uh, his antics before the game. Those are planned. They didn't just come up with those. They're work. You know, sometime during practice, they sat some time aside and they're like, "Let's work on our pregame, joking around." Yeah. Let's yeah. do. Oh, let's do it this time. Oh, this time we're gonna do a bowling one. Like, come on, that's taking away time from practice. I know they ain't doing it on their free time. Yeah. Yeah. And me as their coach, I'm sorry, I wouldn't have. It. Yeah. You guys do that crap. Now you said I understand because as soon as I said that, I was like, "Wait a minute." Dion was the first person to start that. Now look at everybody. Everybody's doing it. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Nip that in the butt now. Okay. Dang, what's wrong with me today? Abel's making total sense. <laughs> oh, I'm freaking fire. <laughs> like, like I told you it's all this political debate and it got me going. <laughs> all right, are we going to get into um, the you, NHL? Yeah, I, I mean, we, we can touch on a little bit. They're on strike. Oh, Thank God, yeah. everybody. Move well, forward. they meet tomorrow again, and yeah. the yeah. NHL has offered the players a 50-50 cut on all hockey-related items oh, from... Everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. From the, don't give in, players. Keep your fifty-seven percent. Fight. Yeah. And they, and then there'll be maybe if they come to an agreement, eighty-two games starting November second. So I'm excited. I would love to see some hockey. I would love to go to the tank. I would love to see the Sharks play. 
Okay. <laughs> Can we just watch soccer in cold weather? Cold, hey, actually, cold U.S. Even. soccer was pretty awesome. We were still. Oh qualifying. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Didn't they get scored on like in the first minute though? Yeah, yeah but, but then they, they came back and they, scored yeah. three on them. Yeah. Yeah. Riveting. It's like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like a seventy to fifty shootout football game. <laughs> Or 23 to 3. Well, hopefully <laughs> next week when we're on the show, we can announce that the NHL's back and that I'll be going to a game on a Wednesday to avoid Abel for one week. Ooh, I'm just my kidding. Are yeah, I doubt it. All right. Um, back to our NFL, our National Football League. Let's which 3-3 three and three team do you think will make the playoffs and which will not? Okay. Which 3-3 three and three team will so not we got, make the playoffs? Like Denver Broncos, Patriots, Green Bay. Uh, uh, also, there's a lot of Eagles. People. Redskins, Chargers, yeah. Dolphins, Rams, Bengals, uh, Jets, Bills. Bills are definitely not, not going to make <laughs> the playoffs, so I'll go hard on the limb and say that now. Uh, the Rams, I don't think, are going to make the playoffs, even though they're showing some promise. They were hey, tough man. at home. They're tough at home. It's not a process of elimination. Sorry. <laughs> you go Pick first, three. Pick. Pick three. Pick three. Okay, tell make me a couple playoffs. teams that will make the playoffs. Okay, three or three team. Packers, yeah. Patriots, yep. Broncos. Broncos. I'm with you on all of I mean, that's what I wrote down. Broncos are winning their division. Um, Patriots, Packers are going to be wild cards. Yeah. Uh, what about the Redskins? Their division's too tough. Mm. I think the Giants are going to... Uh, well, here's the thing. This They're a lot game, better than expected. Dude, I, I was telling you guys when we're at the lo- we're at the locker room. Oh, no, like, yeah. I, I, I told you. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. Just kidding. <laughs> but I, I, they have a tough division. I think the Cowboys... Uh, they're they're doing what the Cowboys normally do at this time. They're not showing up and failing at all times at the games. Um, and this looked disorganized at the end of games, which is surprising. But I don't, I don't see the Cowboys or the Redskins going to the playoffs. But look who they beat. They beat the New Orleans Saints, the Tampa Bay Bucks, and the Minnesota Vikings. So all three, I, well, well, maybe not Tampa Bay, but yeah. quality teams. Yeah. And they had a shootout with New Orleans to begin the year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this next game will, will help me decide. You know, we still have 10 games left each, yeah. you know, 10 weeks left. Still a lot to be Still a lot of football played. to be played, but this game here will help me decide. Say, hey. It's going to be a big one. Are they going to put up? Because they're playing the Giants, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll big be huge. Game. Yeah, that'll be exciting to talk about. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to head to a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk uh, local sports, our Niners and Raiders. Heck yeah. Raider <laughs> Nation. <laughs> Raider No Pulse Nation. Oh, a lot of technical difficulties. <laughs> 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 Boston College! I don't believe it! It's a touchdown! You know you're good at football, but you also know that that's not enough to pay for college. You need someone on your side, and 5starjock.com will give you everything you need to get athletic scholarships. We're offering you ebooks, audio, and DVDs, all designed by those who have gotten dozens of scholarships. You can also talk on forums with people who have received scholarships so that you'll be able to do what it takes to get yours. 5 Star Jock will teach you all the secrets so that colleges have to sit up and take notice of you and grant you the athletic scholarship scholarships you need to live your dreams because we have all the secrets the five star jocks ebooks audio and dvds that you get on our website are a really small price to pay for the hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships you can receive there's nothing out there like five star jock.com visit five star jock.com and start the path to success take control of your future grab the best chance you have to get that athletic scholarship go to five star jock.com now that's the number five star jock.com I'm sure they don't even need a conversion. So you want to talk a little McLean and your Raiders, I believe. Hello, yeah. welcome back to your <laughs> MCM Sports Show. I'm Trisha welcome Callahan back. alongside Brian Rose and Abel, Abel Tovar. Once again, producer, thanks for the countdown. Yeah. Yeah. Nice heads up there, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Eye candy. Okay, we're going to get <laughs> into... <laughs> Look at that porno. We're going to get into your Raiders. Yeah, so. And they're one in three, okay, so one in four. Good old Palmer <laughs> being Palmer. So here we, here we go. For you Raider fans, is there, is there hope? Is there light at the end of the tunnel? Um, you, you could pull a lot from last week's game. You know, it was off a bye. Um, well, they so just they, lost. And they lost a tough game to a, a And a field goal last couple seconds. Yeah. It's a hard loss. Yeah, so. Still don't like them. Oh, Abel. <laughs> Let me fin- Kanye, let me finish. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on, Taylor. <laughs> so, um, there was a lot of positives to look at, yes. Did Carlson Palmer um, 
throw some touchdowns. Did he throw a pick six? Yeah, ultimately he did throw a pick six. But he looked good, at the, and, and the offense looked good. Darren McFadden, for once, um, looked good. Um, How do you say that? He did. It's 27 carries and only 70 yards. That, 27. That, that was a lot of carries. That's a hell but, of a lot of carries. And, and here's the thing. Everything that's a stretch play does not work for the Raiders. Why do they keep running these stretch plays? I have no idea. It irritates the crap out Admit of me. Admit it. They're not smart enough to run zone blocking. They're not. Okay. I, I'm not. I'm telling you they're not smart. They are they could run between the tackles with the best of them. I'm going to tweet Dennis Allen right now. Where's he at? <laughs> I hope he doesn't have a Twitter. Oh, God. Uh, he's he's probably incognito with the Twitter. Let's see here. He's a lurker. But anything from the from the yeah. tackles out or running anything to the flats, the Raiders are terrible. Even with screens, they're terrible. But... They did show some promise. Carson Palmer was once again throwing the ball, spraying the ball out. He did have that pick six. And looking from Palmer's angle, the defender was behind the receiver. You could not see the defender there. And at that split second, you can't count where the defense is. He had to get rid of it fast. And the, the, the defensive player made a great play, picked the ball off, and took it the other way. But at the same time, right after that, he drove the team right down there, gave them a touchdown. Yeah, but that's, that's giving too much credit to him. If you saw that entire game... Who else you want to give the credit to? Atlanta's poor tackling. They were horrible. Look at that play. Well, who was that? They gave it to uh, Higgins? Higgins? That, number Higgins, 10? number 10. Yeah. Higgins, number well, 10. Well, no, well, it was he, like three tackles missed by two people on the same play. He didn't get that many yards. Out of the, he, he, caught, he was going to catch the ball no matter what. Right. But, but he, didn't, he didn't get that many but yards. But he almost got there. in the end zone because of the initial yeah, mixed yeah, tackle. Did, then yeah. the same guy missed the second tackle and yeah. then finally drug him out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. That was just poor. And the whole game, the, from everything I saw, it was just poor tackling. Left and See right how we get Peyton Manning all the credit when it comes down to Carson Palmer. Yeah, I am. Come on now. That's a ridiculous Carson comparison. Palmer, you can't say Carl, did he play bad. Who? He had a good game, Palmer. He threw a pick six. So? What have I harped on him since the day he stepped on Oakland turf he's, he's only, that he throws interceptions? And he did, he blamed himself. I don't have to say anything. He blamed himself after the game. He said it was on him. It's his fault. He let the fans team down. I don't well, as a, as a leader of the as a leader of the team, that's what he's supposed to say. First, as of all. the person that lost in the game, that's what he he's didn't supposed lose in the to game. say. He didn't lose in the game. He came back and gave the team the lead. There was two minutes left. It was tied, and they were already in field goal range. He didn't have to force that ball in there. He didn't, and that's what I was thinking too. You know, he didn't actually force it. Like from his view, the defender just made a great jump on the ball. He it's not like he threw it in a triple coverage or double coverage. He didn't have to from make him, that play. From from his view, he was making the safe play, but the defender made a good made a good uh, jump on the ball. But you can't say he didn't have a good game. Even last week, he had a better game than he's been that I've been. He's only thrown two interceptions. Used to seeing in, him in five games. Two interceptions in five games. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, he's down. He's down from the preseason numbers. That's for sure. He's yeah. averaging one a game and only a quarter. No, play. he's not bad. We won a game. He's five in games. Preseason, oh, in preseason, I said preseason. Oh, preseason. It was preseason. preseason. I was worried. I was. Preseason. I was scared of preseason. It's a long season. But no it, let's talk about the defense side of the ball a little bit. What the hell are you writing? Oh Lord. Let's take. <laughs> let's take. A look go ahead. Go ahead. At, uh, <laughs> the defensive side of the ball. Um, Burris is getting minutes from McLean. And it's McLean the way that he's not performing in the nickel when there's an extra, even when there's supposed to be an extra linebacker out there. Burris is the guy getting the call. He got 70, almost 80 percent of the snaps when you have McLean only played 17 downs, 17 downs well, in the whole game. What do you expect? He's not good. He sucks. Yeah. He just sucks. He's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. And not only that, he doesn't care that he sucks. He like smiles when he gets benched. Whatever. He doesn't care. Even after the game, he was like, the defense, we played better than we have. And all this. I was like, dude, that's not the – you should be fired up. You don't you admit really, that if yeah. you're not out on the field. Like, yeah. We play as much, but we play better. Like, that's not, yeah, yeah. I, I, addition well, by subtraction. I, I like to see the Raiders play that same type of defense against Jacksonville because I know that will equal a victory. We just – Matty Ice is really good, and we, we – Shut him down a little bit in the second half. It's just that last Come drive. Come on, we did. We look at the about? last drive. There was forty Except seconds the last left. Drive. Forty let Kanye seconds let left. Let me finish. Come on. <laughs> you can't say they play good defense and they let someone drive in forty seconds. What was it? Uh, forty they, seconds. They were they were pinned at the yards. what? They were at the. No, they got the. I think they got a penalty. Took them back to the ten or something right. like that. Right. Yeah. And they still got within field goal range in forty seconds. Keep Come in mind, on. it was a fifty-five yard field goal. It wasn't like it was a cheap shot. It was a fifty-five yard. Everybody field can goal. kick fifty-five yarders now. And that Bryant likes to be iced. Did you read about that after that Raider game when you guys iced him and he missed it on purpose yeah. to show you? He yeah. likes that, by the way. Yeah. But he's what, pretty clutch. He missed the first. The, the Raiders called a timeout before the ball was snapped, but they snapped the ball anyway, and he kicked it and missed it on. You could tell he missed it on purpose. And 
then he goes into the clutch. Oh, I yeah. gotcha. Yeah. See? Yeah. Playing around with you guys. Yo-yos. All right, our Niners fell to the Giants this last week. Yeah, it was We're a tough one. Have a, good, have a good week, people. <laughs> <laughs> how, do we, how, how do we beat the Seattle? Oh, they're going to be pissed off. They're coming out. Uh, uh, well, they just got to get back to what they were. They got way too cute. I love Kaepernick, and I like what Harbaugh was doing with integrating them more and more each game because he traded up for them. Mm-hmm. I believe in my heart that Harbaugh believes Cap is better than Alex Smith, mm-hmm. and he's grooming them, and he's getting them more involved in the game because he knows he's better, and that's a way of, of letting him permanently I take over. I think he is better, to be honest. But the thing you. is, you can't do that. You can't maybe maybe five snaps a game, but that to me is still too much. The way he was doing it, honestly, it was almost like every series. Okay, second, yep. third, third down, Cap comes in. You can't do that. I mean, and even though Cap before the half had that thirty-yard bomb, mm-hmm. I mean, a laser mm-hmm. got him within field goal range. They missed it, but that's what Cap shows that he can do. That Alex Smith just can't. He won't try to do that. That's the problem. exactly unless he's wide, completely well, exactly. wide open. And that's my like last year. I spent the whole year defending Alex Smith, and this year I'm still defending him. But I'm admitting Alex Smith's not elite, and there's just – Alex Smith's perfect in this in this uh, setup. System. The system. Yeah. Yep. yep. But that's only if everything's ideal situation. If the defense is playing lights out and if special teams is getting us good field position, then Alex can thrive. When it's when we're down 10 or more points, two touchdowns, and it's on Alex's arm to get us back in the game, there's just, he just can't do it. Yeah. He can't. He doesn't have – he lobs everything he throws. The pass to Randy Moss, underthrown. Mm-hmm. It was a beautiful 54-yard pass. But it's still underthrown. If he catches Randy Moss in stride, that's a touchdown. Yep. Last year versus Baltimore, he did the same thing with Ginn. Threw uh, like a 60-yarder. Underthrew it. It was called back for a penalty anyways, but the pass itself was underthrown. Alex never catches anybody in stride. Well, that's the thing. Every team has their weakness. No matter how good or, or, or I don't want to say how bad, obviously, a weakness. No matter how good a team is, you, you're going to have your weakness. And unfortunately, your, your, your weakness on, on that team is with Alex Smith. But I think if Kaepernick would have played that whole game, I think it would have been way more competitive. But see, I can't say that because he, Alec, I mean Kaepernick from, especially at the end of the Giants game, when they put Kaepernick yeah, in, yep. he has, I mean he has a cannon. Yeah. But the thing is, he knows it and he tries to force it in. Like you saw that last pass that almost got picked off. Well, you see what happened when Alex Smith tries to force it. He forced it in when you. We always say, Alex Smith, take your chance. Try. You, you never know what, what the guy can do if you throw it his direction. He can make the play. But he tried to do that on triple and double coverage, which didn't work out. Which was stupid. Uh, but I think Kaepernick, I don't think that ball even gets thrown if Kaepernick's in the game. No. But see, the difference between them is Alex doesn't have the arm Kaepernick has. And he doesn't have the confidence that Kaepernick has. Mm-hmm. If Alex throws a bomb... His bombs are still lobs. Every yeah. pass he throws, it's a lob. It, it's not on a, week, it's not on a line, to, you know? Um, uh, uh, number 10. Jesus. I can't to Kyle. Know. Yeah. And that ball was severely under Kyle just Kyle turned around. Kyle came back. He yeah. made the play on it. Exactly. Yeah. He yeah. made the play. So people try to say, oh, it's a back shoulder pass. No, no it wasn't. It was under thrown. Yeah. But he just made it look <laughs> yeah. like a back shoulder pass. Yeah. And, and Alex Smith still has the tools to win a Super Bowl. But the thing is, him, him pretty much not having the balls to make certain plays. Yeah. It mean it puts too much pressure on the defense and the special teams to have superb games yep. just to give him a chance. Like people keep, I mean, I've been honestly arguing with 49er fans all week because yeah. they call me now. I'm an Alex Basher. I'm not. I'm just. I'm realistic about him. Yeah. He's he's still great in the system, but if for whatever reason, like like Giants, the system falters and one one of those parts, one of those three parts isn't have is having an off day, and it's on Alex hey, to, some, to win it. He can't do it. Like the 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 49ers have an awesome defense. Sometimes the offense. You know, good offense outplays good defense all of the time right. in almost any sport. And when that happens, you have to have a quarterback that can play almost at that same level to get your team, right. keep have them in the game at least. Now, now, people have been throwing the Saints game in my face. But the thing is, the Niners were never down more than a touchdown in that game. Exactly. So yeah. to say that he came back and he had a shootout, yeah, he had a shootout, but we spot, they spotted him 17 points. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was playing 17 down. Yeah. He was down maybe a touchdown at the most. And, yeah, he, he brought us back. He did have that drive. But yeah. he didn't have two, two touchdowns. Like my, my example is uh, the Philadelphia Eagles game last year. Mm-hmm. We were down 24 to 3 in the, in the second, in the third quarter, down 24 to 3. Uh-huh. He had two touchdowns that brought us back. But if you look at the highlights, both of those passes – were slant passes that the receivers took yeah. five ten yard passes yeah. and took them in. Yeah. So it wasn't like he made tough throws. He made a forty yard bomb to Crabtree in that game. But again, if you look at it, it was underthrown. Yeah. Crabtree was gone, 
in between two defenders, he had to stop and wait for the ball. Yeah. And, and that's what Alex does. He can still get it done, but if any other part of the team has it down an off day, Alex can't get it done with just his See, that's the thing. See, well, when, you, when the running is going good for the Niners, because, you know, Gord basically didn't have enough carries, but the game got out of hand so quick, you guys had to go to passing. Right. But you can't stack eight or nine and cheat the safeties you know, uh, up a little bit because that's what happened when um, when you guys did play um, the Saints. So when those five yard, ten yard slants, there's no help. You get beat man to man. You can go get off to the races, but when that when you're when you're not running the ball and the run is not working, and you have to pass, those safeties are going to step back a little bit because they know the running isn't working. So you have to go to pass now. You're behind. Right. And those, those slants, those five ten yard slants, are just that five ten yard slants. Right. I mean, look at the. It was fourth and fifteen. And they threw, and he threw a five-yard pass. Yeah. Are you, yeah. Uh, I mean, come on, grow yeah. a pair, throw it. You get picked off on that side of the field. Doesn't matter. You're pinning them deep in your territory. Yep. Let the defense get them three and out, and then you get punt. You still get good field position when you get it back. Yeah. Take a shot at least. Exactly. You give up the ball on downs, whatever. They're still pinned deep. And he did a five-yard slam route. Come on, it's it's ridiculous. It's just scary. It's getting close to Halloween. It's me and Abel on the same page. Just, <laughs> something's yeah, yeah something, something's well, going hopefully wrong. Hopefully, it'll go away after this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I think that's all for our, your MCM Sports Show this week. Um, yeah. Remember to check out Chubbit.com. Go on a vacation and then yeah. join us here next week. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Next week, Abel? No? Yeah. I don't know yet. I don't know. Okay. It might just be me and Thrissa, but we'll, we'll see. Make it do I'll let you do. know. All right, guys. We'll see you next week on your MCM Sports Show. Sphincter. Sphincter.